Hey, this is uh, Joshua. Welcome to this YouTube channel. Um, perhaps you might be skeptical of the heavy-handed lockdowns that Britain and other governments uh, around the world have instituted. Obviously, not every nation in the world has done it, not every place, not every state, uh, but some have put in heavy-handed lockdown restrictions and others have not. And to varying degrees, this has affected the church, with churches in some parts of the world told they're either not allowed to meet at all, or if they do meet, they're not allowed to sing or do Sunday school or to uh, talk to anybody. You just have to show up and then leave again. And this has affected the worship and the practice and the discipleship of Christians for over a year now. And sometimes people raise the question and say, is this persecution? And whenever that question gets raised, it is often very quickly dismissed with the idea, with the comment that no, it's not Christian persecution because the government isn't in any way specifically targeting Christians. This is, uh, you know, it's something for all of society. It's a requirement for uh, mosques and shops and political groups can't meet either. And so because it is a uh, broad reaching um, uh, orders that affect all of society, therefore it is not persecution. My question is, is this a legitimate uh, response? Maybe you've heard it. Maybe you've heard it online. Maybe you've heard it from a friend and family member. Maybe your church, and maybe you live in a part of the world where the church is allowed to gather, albeit with probably heavy restrictions, but maybe some other places are not. There's not allowed to have concerts, for example. And then maybe, you know, you might have a, a someone say, well, you, you know, you Christians or you religious people, you know, you're privileged. You can go to your mosques or synagogues or churches or whatever, but we can't go to a concert. And um, so how do, you, how do you respond in that certain situation? Uh, first of all, I think it misunderstands. The, the objection misunderstands what is historically persecution of Christians, of all religious groups, but I'm going to speak specifically of Christians, uh, is, for example, right now in communist China, most everyone would say, at least who's vaguely familiar with the issues, yes, Christians are persecuted over there. We know that churches are shut and churches are burned down and sometimes pastors are in prison and all this. You say that over there in that far distant land, that's persecution. Or you go to Saudi Arabia where churches are shut and you know Christians are arrested. Sometimes you know people convert from Islam to Christianity, they're beheaded. Okay, you know, everyone, that's persecution. But what we have here with the lockdown, that that is nothing at all the same because there they're specifically targeting Christians. But that's just it. Are in is in China and throughout history, has it been specifically targeting Christians? You know, here in the UK, people say, oh, you know, nonconformists, that is uh, Christians uh, who weren't part of the Church of England, uh, Puritans or Methodists or uh, these different group, Baptists, uh, people who wanted to meet and worship outside the Church of England. Um, you say, yeah, they used to be persecuted, uh, but now they're not anymore. Methodists, Baptists, Pentecostals, whatever, they, they can meet freely without persecution. But was it that back then the government was specifically targeting them? I think if you look closely, you'll find that that is not the case. Typically, when the church is persecuted and Christians are persecuted, it's not uh, some politician with big red horns and a pitchfork saying, we're going to get those Christians. No, usually it's uh, they have a vision of what they want society to look like. And every group that does not fit that gets pushed to the side. For example, in communist China, the leaders of the co Chinese Communist Party have a vision of what a communist society should look like. And therefore... Every group that does not operate in line with that, be it a political group or a religious group, uh, therefore, it, we got to get them out of the way. And obviously, in communist China, the church is one of those big items. But they're not the only item. The, these laws aren't being written to specifically persecute the church. As you probably have heard in the news, Muslims are experiencing terrible persecution in communist China too. Political groups that are contrary in any way to the Communist Party, they're also persecuted. Lots of ideology, you try to homeschool your kids, you're going to get persecuted. It, it's not specifically directed at Christians per se, but it affects the Christians because they have a vision of what they want society to look like that's different than the Christian vision. And because of that, the Christians suffer, along with many other groups. 
The same is true sometimes in Islam. Now, there may be places in Islam where they actually have a law specifically naming the Christians. I'm not saying that's never the case. But very often what it is, they have a vision of an Islamic society. And anything that uh, does not uh, fit into that category, maybe a business that doesn't sell halal meat, a Jewish synagogue, a, um, a pro-Israel political organization, a church, any other thing that doesn't flow uh, anything that does not confess that Muhammad is the prophet of Allah, uh, we need to get that out of the way. So even there, they're not necessarily specifically targeting Christians, although, yes, in certain times and places, maybe they have. But that's not necessarily the case. Uh, throughout the world, you can look back and see the Christians persecuted all over the place throughout history. Right now, today, 80% of those who suffer religious persecution are Christians. There's a few other Jews and Muslims and, you know, here and there, but the, the, the widest group uh, is, is Christians. And the majority of the time, it's not because of a law that is specifically targeting the Christian church. That hasn't been the case most of the time in history, and it's not the case now. Christians, even under the Roman Empire, though sometimes the Roman Emperor made decrees specifically against Christians, uh, you know, very often they're against groups who, you know, well, you know, they, the law may be written in such a way it's not targeting Christians, but it's targeting anyone who won't say Caesar is Lord. And if you have a conscience objection to that, you, whether they're for political reasons or religious reasons, you're going to get persecuted. You're part of a guild, but that guild has a patron deity that you're supposed to worship to be part of the guild. Well, you might get excluded, not specifically for your Christian, but because you can't go along with the worship of uh, the pagan deity. You can't participate. You're in the army, but you can't participate in the orgy that the uh, armies and whatever the reason may be, whether it's political or you know, whatever, you, you you will be excluded. And so that's why when you know we say, hey, the government is infringing on our rights to worship, and people say, no, no, the government's not infringing on your right to worship because the government's infringing on everybody's rights. So therefore. Quit your complaining. It's nothing at all like what they're suffering in China or the Middle East or Iran or, you know, blah, blah, blah. I, look closely. There may just be more similarities than, uh, than some people are willing to admit. Uh, if you want to hear more, um, you know, dealing with objections like this, specifically related to lockdown, though we tackle other issues as well, please like and subscribe uh, this YouTube channel and have a great day.